I'm Tim Watson from Timography and welcome to our ninth video blog post. Today we're going to be covering using Nikon flashes wirelessly using the ITTL triggering method, using the triggers in the studio here or out on location. Uh, we're going to be showing you various methods of triggering the flashes using either the camera as the control unit or using one of the, the flash units themselves as the control unit and other flashes as remote units. Uh, there's a lot to cover, so we'll get started. Okay, so ITTL enables you to take a full metered exposure, metered flash output and a metered uh, exposure on the camera to give you a nice pleasant looking shot. There are a couple of ways to use ITTL. You have to have a master unit and you have to have remote units. The master unit, if you've got a D200, D300 or D700, you can use the pop-up flash on the camera. If you've got a Fuji S5 Pro, you can do the same thing. You can use the pop-up flash on that also. Or more commonly, you can just use a Speedlight, an SB900 or an SB800 mounted on top of the camera as the master unit. They need to be in line of sight. The camera, the master unit, sorry, will set off a set of pre-flashes and on our actual slave units, the 900, 800 and 600, all have a sensor window here which needs to be in line of sight to the master unit. What that means, if, if I'm taking a photograph and the flash is pointed this way, for example, our slave unit or, or remote unit, and the window is here, I need to have the flash head pointing at the window if I'm outdoors. If I'm indoors with ceilings and walls, it's not quite so critical because the light is bouncing around. But when you're outdoors, it's essential that the flash head is pointing at that remote window. If you're using a portrait orientation on your camera, let me just quickly demonstrate if I can get the flash on. What we can do is just use the bounce card on the flash and that will send the signal to the light. So what I'll show you now quickly is we'll go through the setting of the menus on the D700 and the S5 Pro and also on the individual flash units showing you how you can select them as a master or as remote and how you can change groups and channels. So what we have here is a, a D700 which I'll demonstrate how to set the menus up to use the flash in wireless ITTL mode. Now for this you would require to use the pop-up flash uh, and so obviously we can use a D700, a D200, D300 and so on. What we want to do is go into the custom setting menu and then to E which is bracketing and flash, okay, and then E3 which is flash control for built-in flash. We get these main choices here, TTL manual and so on, we want commander mode. Okay, now we've got different modes for the different groups, the built-in flash um, you can set, if you want it to contribute to the exposure, you can select the mode, sorry, back this way, you can select the mode to TTL or so on. If you've got it turned off, as it were, it will still actually fire for the exposure. Uh, you just won't see any of the light going to contribute to the image that results. So we can turn that on, then we can go over and select the exposure compensation value that we wish to do, or we can leave it at zero. And similarly for the other channels or other groups as well, turn them onto TTL or manual and so on. And finally, the channel. We can select the channel um, to be whatever we want, the four different channels selectable there. Um, that's pretty much how you set the D700. Okay, and just very quickly we'll go through a Fuji S5 for those of you fortunate enough to own one. It's very similar to the way the D700 works. We go into the setup menu. Tab 1, flash bracket menu, go into built-in flash, and then we change this down to commander mode, and we've got a very similar layout to the D700, built-in flash is turned off, but it will still contribute, uh, and so on for the other groups, and similarly the channels. All works very much the same way as the D700. Okay, so setting the SB900 is very easy. Now we've got a dedicated switch on the back of the unit. So we just switch this all around, all the way around sorry, to master, if that's the mode that we want. And we've got a, a screen display very similar to what you saw on the D700. We can adjust the group by pushing select and then using the command dial here to select the group that we want to. If we wish to change the mode of that group, we just push the mode switch 
and now we can adjust the mode. And if we want to, we just okay that. And if you want to adjust the exposure compensation or the flash, I should say compensation for that particular group, this soft key here now changes our exposure value. And you can set that to where you wish, depending on the results you're getting from the shots. To change the channel, it's very easy. We'll just confirm that change. All we go here is this soft key now is for the channel, which is up here. Push that and we can adjust the channel uh, to whichever we need. Uh, main thing with the SP900 is after you've made every control adjustment, just ensure that you push the OK button just to, just to confirm that control change. Otherwise you could bump it and uh, interrupt the settings. So setting the SP900 to remote is equally as easy as setting it to master. Just move the master switch around here or the mode switch around to remote. Now we've got our group, our channel and a couple other things. To change the group, this soft key now is the group setting. Change the group, push OK after you've made your change. And similarly with the channel, push the channel soft key, set the channel and make sure you press OK when you're done. That's easy. Okay, so setting the SB800, what we need to do is, once the unit of course is turned on, hold down the select button in the center of the keypad, hold it down for a couple of seconds and it brings up a mode menu. Pushing, just tapping select again, now gives us our options where we can select from the list. And for this demonstration, we're gonna select it to master and just tap the on off button and now we're in master mode. Now the controls work in a similar fashion to the SB900. We can select our mode, oh, I beg your pardon, we can select the group uh, and then change its mode by pushing the mode button. Uh, if we want to go to the next one, we just down the arrow, same deal, push the mode switch. Up or down on the keypad changes the exposure compensation. And if we wanted to change the channel, we just keep pressing the select button until we get to the channel option. And then plus or minus or up or down, we can change the channel. Make sure you push select to finish. And that's it. Okay, we set the SB800 to remote mode in a similar fashion. We hold down the select button for a couple of seconds. It brings up our options menu. Just tap select again to select the wireless menu. We're just gonna go down to remote and tap the on off button. And now we're in remote mode. Change the channel, it's just up or down. And confirm with select. Same thing with the group. Select and then just up or down to select the group. And we're done. Now we'll finally set the SB600. The SB600 doesn't have a master mode. It only works as a remote flash. To access that feature, we hold down the zoom button and the minus button for a couple of seconds, and that will select the custom settings menu. The first option that comes up is the wireless option. If we just push the mode button once, we've now got it switched to on. Tap the on off button, and we are now back to our main screen. To change the uh, channel, we can just uh, push the mode button once use the Apple plus or minus keys, up or down keys, select the channel, go over to group, same thing, up or down, plus or minus buttons to select the group, push mode once more, and it's set. Right, so we've shown you how to set the menus on the camera body itself, if you're using the pop-up flash, and also how to set the menus on the flash units themselves, whether you're using them as a master or as a remote flash unit. The most important thing to remember when using Nikon ITTL is to ensure that you're always operating on the same channel. You can assign different groups, but always make sure that the channel is consistent from the master across the remotes, otherwise the system won't work. Okay, so in the future episodes, we're gonna show you how it all works in practice, but for now, we'll leave it there and we'll catch you next time.